Well, hello and welcome back to another session of Squash Fit brought to you by England Squash. This, of course, is the series to help you get back onto court after a sustained and enforced long break. We're using all of our expertise and resources to help you come back to the court in a way that allows you to manage your body, helps to reduce that risk of injury so that you can really thrive and enjoy your time back on. We've already had some incredible guests. We've still got uh, David Campion and Sarah Jane Perry and a whole host of England players yet to come in our final week. We're down to the last three sessions, so I hope you've enjoyed it. There's also the weekly nutritional tips for you to enjoy across at the Squash Fit Hub, so make sure you check that out when you go across there. Of course, I'm here to guide you right the way through all of the sessions. We started off back at home and are now very much on the court doing sessions and getting stuck into the nitty gritty of it. The live sessions, they run every week on a Monday and a Thursday at six o'clock and last around the 45 minute mark. So hopefully you can always join us live. But if you do miss any sessions, you can go to the Squash Fit Hub and you can catch up with any of them. And you can also rewatch all your favorite sessions on demand there. So it really is a great resource to use. If you've got any questions throughout this session that you want me to pose to Tanya, just let me know and I'll make sure that I get them across to her. Well, that leaves only to introduce today's session. And we're lucky enough to have Gina Kennedy. She's a real rising star um, of England squash of England and on the PSA world tour. She is a former European junior champion. She dominated the college scene over in America when she went to Harvard and she's here to um, really power around the squash court and she's chomping at the bit to get on the PSA world tour and guiding Gina through this session. We've got a former world number four, one of the top coaches in England and the world, Tanya Bailey. So really looking forward to this session. Tanya's going to focus on the split step, the power in the movement and linking it together with the hitting. So I really can't wait for this one. Tan, over to you. Thank you. So yeah, so like Lee said there, we're going to be looking at sort of acceleration off the tee, using the split step. Um, how quickly can you explode to the ball and get to the ball early to give yourself a, an option and a threat on the ball? I know a lot of people spend time sort of practicing their swing and hitting balls, but if you can't actually get to the ball, then it, it, you sort of, it doesn't matter how well you can hit it. So I think it's really important. So um, we're going to run through a number of exercises, just sort of almost warming up the split step. And then we're going to bring it in with some ghosting. And then we're actually going to bring in the movement with some hitting as well. So we're going to sort of build up to that um, as the session goes along. But we're going to start off with just getting used to it. And it's a really good way of warming up in a session that um, I used to do a lot as a player as a bit of a warm up, get my, get my feet going, get my speed going um, and just get that liveliness into your, into your feet and your body. So we're going to start off with, so if everyone um, just stands sort of just behind the tee, what you're going to do, you're going to do really quick feet. So you're going to get on, your, on the sort of balls of your feet and just run as fast as you can. Um, and then when I say go, Gina is then going to just sprint forwards, but you're not going to go through a really long sprint. It's just literally about the how you use the step, the split step, and you push forward as quickly as you can. Um, so we're just going to use it as a bit of warm. I'll, Gina will demonstrate and we'll, we'll I'll talk you through as it goes. So, can, can you make sure Gina stops before she gets to the camera? She might, or she might go straight through the wall. She's so yeah. fast and powerful. Yeah, Lee's worried you're going to go through the camera because you're so fast. But um, yeah, I've taught, she's had a tough session today, a couple of sessions. So hopefully she won't be quite as speedy to smash the camera, Lee. We'll, we'll hope. Um, okay, so what? Um, yeah, what we use this as a bit of a warm up. So I'm. I'm going to shout go, but if you're on your own, obviously you can't shout go yourself. You just want to just do a fat sort of ten, five, ten contacts and then go. Or like I said on the last session I did, you can actually just shout go into your phone randomly over about five minutes and then just play it back to yourself, which is a good way of doing it if you're on your own. So, okay, Gina, so the first one you're facing forward, so facing the front wall as Gina is there. So off you go, Gina. So really fast feet and go. It and then just go back so you want to get that so as, as um she goes she has to have a movement back to go forward so you always have a counter movement the opposite way in your split step to the direction you want to move so we'll go again Gina so on your toes quick as you can and go That's it. so then you don't and you don't want a big heavy 
landing with your back foot and you don't want the weight to go through the floor. You want it to be just literally touch and go. So you're not having any sort of weight falling through the, the floorboards. So go again, Gina, just do another one and go. So we're now going to do it facing the side wall. So when you face the side wall, she's going to be facing me. You actually have to split in a different direction to get forward. So just have a little, we'll, we'll watch you do it and we'll have a chat through it. So off you go, Dina, and go. That's it. So back again. So we want, uh, we want a, the split doesn't want to be too big or too small. We want like a neutral split and you want a soft landing. So you shouldn't be able to hear yourself land heavy here. So go, Dina, again. Go. And Tan, you're looking for, for that really powerful, explosive movement, aren't you? So that when someone hits a ball in a direction that you're not expecting, you can push off and snap and go and explode to that ball and then control the next movements when you're actually trying to hit the ball. Yeah, exactly. So you're looking at the, the there just doesn't want to be any wasted time. The contact wants to be quick and go. And then obviously you then accelerate and then there's a deceleration to the ball, which we'll, we'll obviously talk about when we come into hitting a ball. Um, so if you face the other way, Gina, so it's the opposite way. So again, on your turn as best you can and go. Sit. So you want to really turn and then power towards the front wall. So go again, Gina, and then go. So turn and power towards the front wall, that's it. So we're going to do that. We're going to do the same thing now facing the back wall. This is a still warming up. So off you go, Gina, and go. So you're really going to turn. You've got to literally swing your hips around here. And I know I talk a lot about how important movement through the hips are. And in all these exercises, they help you. So as you turn, so go, Gina, and go. So watch her, her hips have gone from facing the back wall to turning and pushing forward. Just gives you a feeling of that power through your hips and that um, really sort of acceleration through there. So just do one more, Gina. They're almost and dropping go. out of the way, aren't they, Tanya? So I can see yeah. it's almost like Gina's dropping the hip out of the way and then, then really kicking down the step and snapping away with the movement. Yeah, definitely. There is a real, I, I, it's so important that you get your hips involved with, your, with the movement and it helps you. Otherwise we get, because if you did this rigid and tight and sort of tension through your arms, tension through your hips, you, you just wouldn't have that same power and you wouldn't be able to push off into different directions very quickly. So then the next one we're going to do, this is still more of a bit of a, a warm up because you're running forwards at the moment. We'll bring in some ghosting in a minute. So Gina, we, we're going to do the, as if you're doing ski strides. So you've probably, some people have probably been doing these ski strides within their um, sort of exercises over, the, over lockdown. But what you're going to do is four ski strides and on the fourth landing, you're going to push forward. So again, it's about you land and you go. There's no sinking down, dropping your body weight. You're literally going to land and go. So off you go, Gina. So go one, two, three, four, two, Three and go. That's it. See, there was no, there was no wasted time on the floor there. She just landed and went forward. So this is just another light, nice little exercise to do. So go again. One, two, three, and go. Sit. So just getting that timing of you sort of hanging on the tee. You're in the air and you land and you want to go. You, you obviously in the game, you're going to track the ball and try and get the timing. But I think if you can't do it here without a ball, then it's going to be really difficult to then manage it when there is a ball in play. So go again. So one two, three, four, and push, sit. So obviously you, 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 you do use your core and your arms and everything in this as well. Um, it sort of naturally comes in. So I think just making sure the contact, like Lee said before, is really quick and no, sort of no weight and heaviness going into the ground. Okay, so this time we're gonna get, um, we're gonna get four markers. So we're gonna go, so I want you to get um, your, your, your cones or whatever it is you've got, and we're just gonna put these so we're going to do one and two at the front. And then you're going to go three, four, just so the back corner. So you're going to now, you're going to do the movement with a ghost. So if you pick your racket up, Dina, and then we'll. Okay, so what, um, what Gina's now going to do, we, we've, we've put the, so just maybe go back here. We've put the tee just slightly back just so that you can really see it. Um, she's going to go on, um, she's going to do a, like a, a star jump in and out with her feet. And then when I'm going to call out and she's going to go to one and then back and then do it again and go to two. OK, so we're going to go to the front corners now within that after the split step. So ready, Gina, so what? And go. So the one, sit. So you should sit. And if you just, you can swing the, swing the racket. So, so go again, in, out and go. Sit. So you want to get that transition of your sort of your movement and then you, you're going to push off that back leg really drives yourself forward. So go again. Go. Sit. So I'm looking at the, the most important thing here is this movement and this pound speed off the tee. 
Um, at the moment, we're not too worried about the actual uh, shot. We're just looking at how quickly you can get there. So just step forward a tiny bit, Dina, because you're going to go to the back. So you can go to that one, um, number three, and then number four. So off you go. Go. So if you have a look now, that movement is very diff is a different direction, obviously, to go into the front. And it's still she's still splitting and getting power, but obviously the, the power's coming from that left leg and pushing her back in the opposite direction. And that's what's so important when you do the split step. You you don't you get the you get it right and you don't um you don't go too wide or in the wrong direction, otherwise you, your weight of movement will be going in the wrong direction. Go again, Gina. So you're gonna come to this one and go. It's almost like you're imagining that the floor is a wall that you're pushing off with your feet, isn't it? So you're actually pushing yeah. in that opposite direction to really propel you. Yes, and I think it's, it's something people don't often think about, but it makes such a difference. If you want, it gives you that fraction of a second quicker, if you can get that momentum, because what happens is a lot of people, the momentum just goes the wrong direction and into the floor, and then it can't spring back out. Like we were saying before, that spring is so important. So go again, Gina. And go. That's it. Just see the, the lightness and the power in that in that split step there. It's a re really good angle to see it from with the going to the back corner there, actually. You can really see the direct. So one more. So go. And go. That's it. Well done. So um, we're just going to do a few of different exercises similar to this, but really keep thinking about that, um, that quick contact and the split step. So this time you're just going to literally do side to side jumps, Gina. And then you're going to go to one or one, then two. So side, 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 keep going. And one, go. Sit and back. And then side, side and go. Sit. So it's just, it's just finding ways of sort of disrupting your movement slightly and then having to go. So they, all these little exercises, they, um, they can be done in all, like just two or three of them. You don't need to do loads, but as long as you get that power. So just do a go again. And we're going to go to the back corner and go. And then again, and then we come, go. You, you don't even need much space to be able to do this, do you, Tan? So you can do it as a warm-up or you can do it at home. You can do it in the garden. There's, there's so many times where you can actually practice that, that lightness on the feet and stepping and sort of going in different directions very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can do this anywhere, like I say, in, at home. Just to, you just need a tiny bit of space. Even if you haven't got room to go, you can still practice that movement. So, yeah, absolutely. And I think... I just keep sort of saying it's about power and speed, but with, with relaxation and lightness and that smoothness. And um, it's difficult to get the balance because so if I say to people a lot of the times, right, we're going to go jump and do a split step. I just see a lot of tension come straight away through their body. And, and they really, they sort of, that tension just takes a fraction of a second longer to move. Whereas the lightness, it's through your hips, through your knees, through your body, through your feet, everything. So I think, I rec I, I'm pretty sure if you did this this sort of stuff, you'd find yourself that just that lightness on the tee and that hanging on the tee would be a bit softer, and then you just get to the ball that little bit that little bit earlier. So, um, so the next one we've got is Gina's just going to jump up and down twice and then go. So we'll do the, the corners the same. So up and down, just one, two, then go. That's it. So then again, so get back and go one, two, then the opposite corner. So what? I like this because you just get you're getting a bit of height, so you keep going, Dina. So you're getting a bit of height, but look how she, she lands and then glides across the floor. So there's high, high. So you might be in all sorts of positions. You might be in the back corner having to take a volley up high, and then you've got to come down and power to the front. So it just gives you a different sort of different position, different movement. But but see that sort of that glide you get. She's she's not sort of landed and jumped again. She's landed and the, and the movement she's got is towards where she wants to travel. There's no, it's, it's efficient. There's no wasted sort of gone round, deviated. She's there and bang, she's straight into that position. Um, and, and it's gonna help you to not get tired, isn't it? As well as quickly, because as soon as there's tension or force going on when you're play, uh, playing, you'll get tired. And I was thinking about it when you were just talking on the last exercise, when you watch sprinters, you know, they're very, very muscular and very strong, but actually they're very relaxed. And it's not until they actually, when they get tired, they tense up and then they slow right down. It's the same principle. Yes, definitely. I think um, you're, you're exactly exactly right there. And I, th I think a lot of people do waste so much energy moving when they don't need to. So that efficiency and that lightness is just, 
you, you'll, you'll find you'll last longer. You'll be three, four, four points into a game where you start to feel that burn and your opponent will get it or will get it first. But definitely that lightness on the tee. I think it, it just takes so much energy. A lot of people as well on the tee, but rather than using a split step, they just sort of fall back on their heels. And you see that, don't you? That rock back to go forwards or they go sideways. So you just, just don't want any of that. You want that, that lightness and movement. I know I'm talking about it a lot, but it's really, really important to, to get that. So sort of bearing that in mind, this next one actually fits in quite well. So what we're going to do now, rather than facing forwards, I know some of you might be saying, oh, well, in a game, we don't always want to face forwards. But obviously for the, just the um, exercise, it's good to do it like that. So Gina's now going to face, or you, you're going to face sort of from the tee. So where Gina, you're stood, sort of, Front wall, side wall, nick. So on the four, forehand or right hand side. And now you're going to do an, an exercise from there. And I'm basically going to use the two co two markers. So that'll be one and two now. We'll go one and two. And what I'm going to do is do is just raise up onto the balls of her feet. So make sure make your sort of shoulder width apart. So Gina, if you go, so you don't want to be wide, like we said, and you don't want to be too tight. Just shoulder, I'd say maybe just slightly more than shoulder width but just a softness in your knees, raising up, so heels slightly off the ground, and a softness. And I'm basically just going to say go, and Gina's going to go to number one. You should get a good angle of, of this, but this is a bit more probably realistic position on the tee at times where the ball's sort of in the back corner and you have to then move to the front and then to the back. So, so when I say so just raise soft and go. That's it. So play, play a forehand there. So play that as a forehand. So go again, Gina. So side on and go. So just... Go a little bit more, I'd go slightly more, not, not too wide, but just a bit more shoulder width there. That's it, Gina, raise and go. That's it. And we're going to do three into the back row. So side, sideways facing slightly and just relax, raise up and go. That's it. And again, so slow and go. So just sort of hang there. You want a bit of a suspension. So this is something that actually that um, Gina's been doing in her sessions as well, is that suspension in the tit, on the tee and holding and tracking the ball. And then when you need to go, you go. You don't want to, you don't want to go um, and just run through, sort of through the tee. You just want to have that hold sometimes and have that softness in your, in your hand. So just hold, hold again, Gina, and go. So we don't want to have our heels too high. We don't want them too low. So it's a position that you, the more you practice it, the more comfortable you get with what you're trying to do. Just one more, Gina, and go. Okay, so we'll just yeah, do it's, it's important to remember, isn't it? Balls of your feet, not not toes and not heels. So it's just getting that balance, so you nice lightly on the balls of your feet, and then and then staying tall within that. Yeah, definitely that that tall. And we, I know it, this is from years ago as a player. Um, I was told to sort of have that sort of hanging feeling. Someone's just sort of lifting you up. I know Paul Carty's talked to it me about that a lot. Just someone's lifting you slightly off the ground, and you're not sort of right up, but you're just not sinking. So it's finding your position that's comfortable there but but try it out and practice and see see how you feel but if you were to if you like Lisa talking about sprinters if someone said sprint now you definitely wouldn't put your heels down you wouldn't also go really high on your toes because you're unstable so just get in that position that suits you so facing the other corner so everyone faces the left hand wall sort of corner uh, front wall side wall nick and just nice and soft and go Sit. so we'll just do a couple there and go so just that I like the fact that it's then. getting you ready, Tan, for and any go. any kind of shot that the opponent's going to hit and also getting you in different positions so that you have to go into multiple sort of directions. So it's like a, a little piece of the jigsaw that all comes together to, to make you be able to cover all sorts of um, variety of options or things that might happen when you're playing. Yeah, definitely. And, and although I've only I've got four here, you can go to any of those four corners. I'm just doing certain ones just to, for the sake of obviously making sure everyone knows what they're doing. But I would also put a five and a six across the middle because you want to be really powerful across the middle too. So I'd have one which is a more a sideways cutting the half volley off, cutting the volley off as well. So I'd add that in if you're going to do this a bit on your own and use all the four corners for definite. So let's just do uh, this, this back corner So and go. Sit and hang. And go. That's it. And rest there. But just really take on, take on board that um, that movement. I like keep reiterating it. That power you get. So it just you make it as fast as you can. Just go. Let's go. How fast can you get off that tee and towards the ball? You might not always want to move that fast in a game, but knowing you've got that speed, um, 
just gives you a lot of confidence. And I, I know that I've found this a lot over the last few weeks, um, people hitting, they're running right at the ball and into the corners because they sort of haven't got that confidence in their movement. So they're almost just charging. Whereas if you can hold the tee and only move when you need to, that does make it a lot more efficient. So we're, um, that one, well, we're done with that exercise now, but we're going to bring it into some hitting. So what we're going to do is a bit of a mixture of um, Gina using the split step to hit a ball. And then we're going to just incorporate some ball warming exercises and a little bit of skills within it. Because I think if you're going to hit solo, you do need to make sure you keep warming that ball up between sort of sets. Otherwise, if you're hitting sort of drop shots, the ball will get cold. Um, I would also recommend, I know we've probably talked about this before, um, the yellow uh, one dot ball, if you are going to do solo, um, it's always worth using a ball that's a bit bouncier because it naturally will get a little bit colder. Gina hasn't got, she's got a double dot, but she'll be fine. Um, I'm just going to move the um, move these out of the way just so that, so we're going to start off with just a little ball warmer and it actually, is, it's just going to incorporate a little bit of um, quick hands, follow through rhythm. So quite a nice one to start with. So Gina's just going to stand so sort of roughly just behind just behind the tee line and she's going to hit side wall to side wall. Just a really nice ball warming exercise. Follow through, she's just going to get, get it. It's really cold. It's been in my pocket trying to get warm. But so there, watch, just trying to keep it on the line if you can. So if you can keep it from deviating backwards and forwards up the court, up, that means you're getting your sort of follow through in the direction you want it to go. So it's just a, a nice little rhythm, rhythmical exercise while getting the ball warm. I think you just pick the pace of a bit, Gina, just to see if it starts to really get some speed. So whipping through the ball. See, once you follow through, you're ready for the next shot, turning the shoulders, turning the, rotating the body through. Good. Good, Gina, it's nice. Good. You can start, once you've got comfortable with that, you can actually do that same exercise on the volley, but it is quite a bit more difficult. So she's trying to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. Well done, Gina. Well done. Did, right there. You stopping it quickly before you're in danger. Yeah, that was that was just... Uh, no, I trust her. I fully trust her. Um, but yeah, I think the, the, it's a ball warm, but it is. You can see the rhythm and the timing and the follow through has to go and back ready. And you're moving your hips, you're moving, your, you're rotating through. And as soon as you don't follow through there and really release it, that ball doesn't go where you want it to go. It either goes um, sort of cross and into you, or it just doesn't make this other side. So really nice little exercise there for everyone to try. The next one, this is another slight, sort of more of a ball warmer again, is just the three wall boast to three wall boast. So you're gonna go forehand to backhand. So Gina's gonna just go above the, above the line on the front wall. And she's just going to get rhythm and smoothness. So we just, this is this again, just getting the ball sort of warm and getting your eye in. We've been doing a lot of those movement exercises we're going to incorporate next. Once you get comfortable with this exercise, you can start to go a lot lower and a lot faster, but I'd recommend just smooth and rhythm to start with before, and then you can build it up to faster and lower. And you, you can look at the two wall bows, but that's, um, yeah, that's extremely difficult. And I think Gina will tell me off if I suddenly chuck that one at her. <laughs> you can really um, start to connect the hips with the shot as well in this, can't you? Because you can really start to, to get a rhythm and flow yeah. if okay, you're rotating right, there, and Gina. feeling that well flow. Definitely. And I think the rhythm and, fl the rhythm and flow is really important for that exercise. And I know um, some people sort of say, oh, that's just not a shot I'd ever play in a match and I wouldn't hit the sidewall first. But it's, it's what you make of it solo you make it suit what you want to work on. And that is something that if you get rhythm and flow in your swing and you're hitting and you can work your upper body and lower body and swing all as one, it will help you in all shots. So don't worry if you think, well, that isn't a shot that I'm going to use necessarily that much. It is really, really good stuff to do. And I think solo, we, we, the trouble with solo is where well, you get a lot of just straight sort of drives a lot and then someone might go and play a few drops and it's all sort of, it's good, but I think we just want to get some of the other things as well that people can just add into their sort of solo practice. So um, so this next one we're going to do is, Gina's now going to boast the ball round quite high. So we're going to now incorporate this split step into her movement. So she's going to boast the ball from, she's probably going to start a little bit further back. So maybe 
um, back corner of the service box, I'd say you want to start. Boast the ball around nice and high from forehand to backhand. And I want you to see if you can hold your movement on the tee and then split step and play a straight drop. So, Dina, if you, if you boast that round quite high, hold the tee and play the straight drop. But you can probably boast it, maybe not as quite as high. <laughs> so that's it. And hold the tee. And that's it. Good. So I, I do maybe three of those. So boast it round, hold. See how that, that's so much more realistic to me than just standing and playing drops because she's actually, you can see her, can't you? She's tracking the ball now and then she's deciding when to go at the right time. And I think that is, it's, it's a quite a simple exercise, but really important one. So you have a little go on the backhand, Gina, with the drop. It starts so to really I'll work win. on your spacing from the ball as well, doesn't it? Because you're working out yeah. with your movement, when nice. you should go how close you can get, where your lunge needs to be, your timing onto the ball. So there's a lot, lot to go on in there. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it incorporates all sorts of technical movement, everything, go one more, that you want to do in a, in a game. And, and you can really stretch yourself with that. Obviously, like, as Gina sort of did, does that more, she would go lower, she'd make it have to go a bit quicker, she'd put herself under more pressure. Um, go back to the forehand now, Gina, and what you're going to do is now you're going to whip the cross court. So what we're going to do now, rather than playing a drop, She's now going to get onto that ball and, and whip it cross court, but, but look like she could play the drop at the same time. Okay, Dina, so boast up. Oh, do it again, do it again. Boast it right round to there and step. Step. So you just want to get the, the splits there. We're just watching that you don't hit the, hit the camera there. Step. So just play around with it. So now if you come to this side, Dina, and you can choose to either boast to cross court or drop. Because you're going to change. Yeah, so you start, you start to play around, but get that hold in your movement. You can bring yourself as far up the court as you want or give yourself a bit more time. That's it. So you want and that. So go, Lee. You want these shots to, to be as similar as possible, don't you? So that you've got both options and your opponent doesn't know what you're going to hit when you come in. Yes, definitely. So the, the prep is so important. And that's where, that's where the split step and the timing of the movement gives you threat. And you, you, you know when you play people, when, when they're quite obvious to read and they haven't actually had any sort of threat on the ball, it, it makes it obviously a lot easier for their opponent. So you want them to, you, well, Gina doesn't want me to know what's coming until that last minute. So she's using her movement and then timing her swing and using the similar, similar preps. So just, um, just do a couple more where you've got the option. It's up to you, you choose. So see that nice soft hold and that pause in the, in the movement. It's, it's hard to practice this sort of thing in, in matches without doing it here because you, you need a bit of time. You need to get used to it and you don't want to try and put yourself under too much pressure and then give up with something. So I think it's really important using that split step within, within the shot. Okay, Gina, so with, uh, next one, we're just going to do a little ball warmer again um, because obviously once you've now done some um, drops and drives and slowed them slowed the hitting down it might get a little bit cold the ball so she's going to do a figure of eight now but on the fourth shot she's going to play a cross court drop so she's going to go off the bounce a figure of eight which i'm, I'm sure most of you have probably seen before but then just on the fourth shot she's going to play a cross court drop so she's going to go around the wall around the wall and she's going to drop that in sit so just changing the racket angle so the so you can bring the speed up just to get the ball sort of a bit a bit warmer. Wet, like I'm going to make her do it a bit quicker. That's it. And then turning the wrist, dropping the racket in. So these are just nice ways of doing doing a figure of eight with a little bit of variation there. Lovely. So keep going, Gina. Just keep going round. So going. It's, it's a really nice little again rhythm exercise, but it makes you look at racket angle, dropping the ball in. It just get, gets the ball a bit warm as well and breaks it down a bit. Should we go again? We would do this on the volley, but we're just a bit concerned about the camera. So I, I would recommend trying this on the volley after. So I've now, when you want, I've now, when you want to, Gina, on that fourth shot, rip through a cross court drive or put it in. So just trying to get that to there. That's it. So you're going to just either punch it deep or play the, play the straight drop. So it just gives you a bit of a right variation. See how footwork's, in, footwork's important there as well. She's, rocking side to side and you, using a movement to switch switch around nice and relaxed okay that's it nice we go again oh well yeah. so this time Gina just just 
punch a straight drive now. So this is just giving you, you've got the cross court drop, you've done some cross court drive, and then now you might just, just punch it, punch it straight. That's it. Just keep going for it. Okay. So we're going to move on now to um, the ball. The ball should be a bit warmer now. And we're going to try to feed ourselves a back wall bow. So you're obviously hitting the back wall first to the front wall. And this really is a really good way of using the split step and getting onto the shot. So um, you can do forehand, forehand for a couple and then try the backhand back wall bow. But what a lot of people say to me, well, I can't hit a back wall bow. But if you can hit the ball from the front wall to the back wall, then there's no reason why you can't hit it from the back wall to the front wall. And I think it, it, it's actually, a, it's, it's a skill to practice, even though it's, again, it's not one you'll use in a game. But if you can get your follow through really up, come onto the tee, hold, and then pounce onto the ball. So Gina's gonna do it. So if you do just a forehand, and if you play a straight drop off the first one, okay, without, I'll just step out of the way. So that's it, that's it, we're done. So we're going to do do a couple do do a backhand. So switch each time. So just watch. Really bring that movement up. So come off the once you've back wall bows, move to the tee quick. Slow yourself on the tee. So give it a real lot of height. Slow yourself on the tee and in. So I want I want you to the reason for doing this is I want you to move. Keep going, Gina, while I'm talking. Um, I want you to move off the shot. Follow through. Move quick. Slow on the tee and then split step and go to your shot. So just keep doing some straight straight um, drops or, yeah. So can you, you should be able to see there, Dina's movements fast, slow, like you were talking about Lee, and then suddenly, then she goes again. Yeah, it's funny, so isn't it? it you, you have more time than you realize coming through the middle and you can see that Gina's slowing right down, pausing and then pouncing on the ball, whereas, a lot of players that maybe aren't as experienced would panic and just sprint straight through and then almost get on top of the ball and then be backing off as they're trying to hit and sort of salvaging it. So it, you yeah. really have got more time than you think. Yeah, and, and, and that's exactly right. You, you see, like Gina's doing really well there to have that change of pace. What you do, you see people just absolutely charge through the middle. And, and, and I know something she's been working on and actually is doing really well with that hold and go, hold and go and using... She's, she's obviously very fast and she wants to use her speed to her advantage. You don't just want to charge through the tee. So I think it's really, really good to get used to that. And, and whenever you do any, and, and we might, if we get time at the end, do some ghosting where you do actually do that slow, fast, slow, fast, slow for a few shots, then fast. And it just gets used to different paces because in a match, whenever is there a rally that's always this one pace all the way through. I, I, I don't think there ever is. It always changes you want to, and you want to be able to damage your opponent by using your speed at the right time. A lot of people are really fast, actually. They don't use it how they should and don't benefit from it as much as they could because they play someone who disrupts that speed and then they're in a bit of trouble. So it's really important. So that, yeah, really good. So Gina, just do a few more where you now have an option whatever shot you want. You can cross cut drop, you can trickle bow. So just keep that same movement you were doing there, Gina, but just have a bit of, that's it. So, so now have a little bit of, just, just give yourself a chance to experiment a bit, play around with your movement. Oh, that was, did well to get it to land there. So yeah, so really whip, whip it off, push forward, and then really threaten what shot you're playing. Sit, nice. So yeah, lovely to add a trickle bow there and use that different variations. Determined to hit me, I think. Okay, so really good stuff, really good stuff. So keep going, just do a couple more, Gina. So I think it's really nice, to, uh, really good to see you doing that movement. Good stuff. Well done. One more. I'm, I'm enjoying watching the movement and the swing. This is well like done. Gina's Nirvana, though, isn't it? Being able <laughs> to run the whole length of the court repeatedly. Yeah, she'd do this all day long. Um, yeah, no, re really good though. And I think, like, really have a go at that and try it. Even I know the ball will get a bit cold if you do it, but just do a few minutes of it, a few shots, and then do a little, little ball warmer just to get the, get the ball going again. And then do, do the boast and the drop. So just mixing it in. And I think it's really important. So that, that in mind, we're just going to do a little um, volley sort of ball warmer. We're going to, um, Gina's just going to volley it to herself and then cross cut it. Volley it to herself and then cross cut. But, 
Um, yeah, that's it. So volley to herself, cross court. Again, these little exercises, there's so many things you can do with a solo practice on court and so much that can be gained from doing it. The control through doing this exercise here is, is actually, it, it is a lot harder than it looks. So don't worry if you find this quite hard. Even if you can do two sets, three, that's progress. Because it's a lot of core involved, a lot of rackets or head speed, a lot of control. A lot of, yeah, a lot of ball control as well, isn't there? Through the hand and wrist and sort of just getting the spacing right, the timing and like say the rhythm and flow as well. So there really is so much going on. So it looks simple, but it's very, very difficult. And people get frustrated when they try and do this. When you see the the sort of the quality players doing it and making it look so easy, there's a lot of practice has yeah. gone into it. Well, oh, Gina, yes, definitely. I have a break. I have a stop there. Uh, yeah, exactly. It it takes a lot of skill, a lot of control, a lot of sort of strength for your core, footwork, swing, watching, see how she's tracking the ball there. As soon as any of that breaks down, that exercise will also break down. And uh, and and don't I don't expect the first time you do that you're going to do that like that because it is difficult. Um, it's even if like say even if you can just start to get one two and then that breaks down it's just progress through just do Gina just do volleys cross court to yourself so just across the middle and I know again that an exercise that I think is really really good just flows out follow through and from from that position you can whenever you want sort of play the straight drop yeah so just chuck in just do that and throw the straight drop in or the straight drive and just punch through the ball so you're getting that control and then you might just release through the ball I like I think, the change okay. of angle, Tam, because it, it means that you're going from cross-court, cross-court to straight, and it means you have to adjust your racket face and adapt through the hand, don't you, in the shot? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Anything that gives you sort of an angle and makes you think about how you, how you do have to adapt your grip and the racket face, is, it's all learning. To, it might not be that position, but it might be a shot in the back corner where you just want to turn a cross-court and catch your opponent out. and. I think anything, any any solo, like I say, if it's done with a reason and you, that's right, Dean, you can have a break there. Done with a reason and a purpose, you're trying something out, then it's worth it. I think you, the only um, thing is if you just go, if you just go on and just sort of hit willy nilly and don't think about anything, you'll still have a bit of fun, but you won't necessarily help yourself improve. Which is if if, if you're fine with that, that's okay. But if you if you want to improve, you've got to start to think about why am I doing this exercise and how's this helping me and how can I incorporate this into my Game. Okay, so now the balls again should be a little bit warmer. Um, we're going to do Gina's going to feed herself from sort of just behind the team, maybe service box line. She's going to feed herself a cross court drop and she's going to go in and play a counter. So she's got to really push off the mark as soon as she's played the cross court drop and she's going to stretch onto a counter. So you can do it either side, Gina. So you can join, if you start that side. So you feed yourself a cross court, not too low, and just play a counter drop. So from this position, you're going to turn. So you're feeding yourself across. You're hitting a cross court. That's it. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Then do it the other side. So then just switch. So you basically so be. You can start to feed it a little bit shorter and put yourself under a bit more pressure. She's basically once she's done that, she's turning and she's in for the drop. That's it. So once she's once she's played that, she's turning racket lead. That's it. Starting to really open up through the hips and put that put that um that ball in on a counter drop. Nice. Just do a couple more. So I really like this one, just get, because I think the counter drop in a game is underused, really. The straight counter drop, often that's the biggest space to hit and someone's played a boast or flicked the ball out and we don't, we hit the ball back to them. We see that a lot, um, but she's just using her, just a couple more, Dean. She's using the splits that we talked about, the power and the speed to get onto that ball early and then have the balance to just play that counter out early. And I, I think if you, anyone who doesn't use that in a game, just see if you can incorporate it. Try this exercise and see if you can incorporate it in. So now, Gina, from that position, you're gonna cross court lob. So this is another shot that's, I think, underplayed. She's basically gonna, she's under pressure. The person's put her in, but she's gonna pounce on. She might play this little um, counter drop, but she's gonna lift it. So, so she's getting that balance, so she push, the speed, there she goes off and she's under the ball and it's up and over. So, so now you choose, Gina, you're going to play either. So drop it across. That's it. 
So the other thing is she's seeding herself at an angle, an angle again that's realistic that will be happening again. So if we just sort of stood at the front and fed ourselves for a lob or a drop, we're not moving to it. It's just not as realistic and actually it's not going to really help you. Nice. Good stuff. Well done. So I think that, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things in there. Um, lots of different exercises. Just really quickly, I know if we've got, we've got a few, like a couple of minutes. I, I just want to finish with, if you can take away some fast, slow, change of pace ghosting, um, so we don't need the ball anymore. But I'm just going to, if you follow what I'm saying, so what we're going to do, I'm just going to say steady or fast. And Gina's going to go either steady or fast, whatever she wants. But I want you to try and incorporate this split step we've talked about now and think about the shot you're hitting because it's really important when you go. So I know you've done it. We did it with carts the other day. But I want you to, rather than just go in sort of medium pace, this is more random. Random timings, random speed. Okay, Gina. So everyone out there, if you if you start ghosting, go where you want. Go about sort of sixty percent, nice and steady. When I say go fast, we're going to go fast, nice and steady. Keep going. Okay, now fast you can, Gina. Two shots. Oh, sorry, two shots and go steady again. So go steady again. So I want to see that real change of pace, steady until I say go, Gina. So nice and steady. You can do this in sets of you might do ten shots slow. Four shots fast, five shots slow, three. So three shots, Gina, as fast as you can. Go. Back, go. And go. So you bent, you're back into your steady. So you're, you're rallying, you're just chipping the ball up and down the wall, you're buying your time, you're waiting for your opponent to sort of make an error. And then you onto it, Gina, go, two. So counter, and then counter back in that corner. That's it. Well done. And steady again. That's it. So nice and so slow to so hold. So just hold on the tee a bit more, Dina, and go. That's it. So come back and hold, and then I'm going to go, go, as fast as you can. That's it. And slow it down. So go about 50, 60% again, nice and steady. So this is a rally where you might be, again, just buying, buying your time, chipping the ball, measured drives down the wall. A lot of play is at this sort of pace incorporated with really fast. Okay, Dina, so come back to tee, and you're going to go volley, volley across fast. Ready? Go, volley, volley. That's it, and slow again. We're just gonna do a couple more. Slow again, it's nice and steady. Pick it up a little bit more, so just go a little bit faster, but not flat out. So you're just trying to go a bit faster now, Dina. That's it, and then do a couple of slow ones again. You lift it, maybe just steady it. That's it. And go, so in, and then back in, go right, back in. Come right to the back corner, and both start there, back to the tee, and slow down. I didn't tell her she was going to do that, sorry. Um, but that, that, that to me, that is just realistic to, to rallies. And I, 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 I know people go, but you don't, often we don't have that change of pace. And like I say, you need the energy systems to be using that you're going to use in a game. And that is what happens in a game. You know you have some rallies which are a bit slower. You know that you have somewhere suddenly someone puts a really quick boast in. I've got to get that ball back really quick. And then I might go into a slow rally or I might have two or three shots really quick. So I think it's really important to, um, to go like that. Rally, shot, think about the shot, think about the speed, think about the timing. And you can mix that up and play around with it and do like longer sets. You can do really like two, two shots fast, three slow, two, three, just really incorporate it quickly. But um, It's well, making Gina, it realistic it's, again, isn't it, Tan? It's making it as realistic as you possibly can when, you, when you're doing any of this so that it slots into your match play. Absolutely. And I know I um, did the ghosting session um, with Carts, and I think it's so important. And I, I know as a player, and I know the players that I've sort of worked with on this sort of stuff, it's made a difference to the game. And, and uh, you, you, can, you can really feel the benefits from doing it and the speed. Suddenly, like, you're on court and you, you fly onto a drop and you just play it because you've just got that, that split step. You've... You've got the speed, you're used to moving that change of pace. Whereas you know what it's like, I, I've, I've hit with people these last few weeks and we've, I've put in one hard rally and they're just like, oh, this is killing me. But just because they're not used to it. And even if it's just two shots, all of a sudden they're flat out. Moving flat out is a huge like energy system is used on, in that that we don't necessarily use if we do everything at like sort of steady and controlled. So you have to have a bit of, bit of a difference. I, I understand in a game, the split step is of a lot of it's to do with tracking and timing of the ball. But I think if you can do those bits of solo, 
you suddenly find you, you do start to see the ball, look for the ball, where is it, track it, follow it round on the boat, follow it on the cross court, follow the ball wherever you need to. Whereas um, it's easy just to sort of think you're watching the ball and following it and tracking it, but you're not. And without that, the split step's very difficult. You end up just reacting and that's what we don't want. That's where frantic sort of players look like. That's why they look like that. Yeah, so, yeah. I think I think the good thing about it is, and what I loved about that is, or you hear club players and and a lot of players really struggling with movement into the front corners and those practices where you were linking the movement with the solo was really starting to connect that and it was a controlled way of practicing how you move into into the front of the court and it's just so good to be able to practice the the first steps into different directions and then controlling how you actually get into the front and then it can all be sped up and um I think it's such a good thing to practice. But how often, how long would you do a session like that? And and how often would you want to get it into what you do to be able to really see the rewards? I think it's little and often with this sort of stuff. I don't think you you probably wouldn't do more than... If it's really explosive and speed and acceleration, you do probably a couple, into, a couple of shots into the corner, have a rest and go again to be, really get the full speed and... You probably wouldn't do more than, I don't know, twenty minute session on that. Probably the max, really. And I'd I'd use some of the the first sets we did as warm ups, and I'd, I'd I'd do them most days. Probably every time you go, just add it into your warm up. But the actual ones with the ghosts in, maybe twice a week, I'd say, like at least if you're going to really feel like the benefit from from doing it. But yeah, little little and often with that, I don't think you you get to an hour of doing that, you're not going to be going flat out anymore it's just not possible so yeah and build it up build it up over time maybe try once a week then build it up to twice and see if you can even get to three times yeah brilliant thanks a lot tan really good really enjoyed that session so valuable to do bits like that to start to incorporate them to really find out what what works for you what you need to work on and if you can start to to put those pieces together and really understand what your preferences are then you can really start to to make those improvements. And you really, six months down the line, you, you're going to be a different player. So I would really, really can't stress it enough to, to put into practice what um, all our experts are talking to you about. So another really good session. Uh, we've still got two more sessions to come. Next week will be our last week before we can start to really focus on playing some squash. But um, it's going to be David Campion on Monday with Sarah Jane Perry. That should be an incredible session. And then it's the grand finale with a whole host of England players on Thursday. So make sure you visit the Squash Fit Hub to be able to sign up and register for that. And of course, if you want to see this session again, you'll be able to watch it on demand there as well. But that's all we've got time here this evening. So thank you very much from myself, Tanya and Gina, they're off to do a core session. They've not done enough work just yet. So I'm sure they'll just get in another session before dinner later on. But um, that does conclude the session here this evening. We hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we look forward to you joining us again on Monday for more Squash Fit brought to you by England Squash. See you then. <laughs>